All right, in this video, uh, we're gonna look at recursion uh, that's working with methods. We've seen lots of examples with functions. This is our first one with methods. And we're gonna use it for something very practical. Um, so currently in Python, right, we've been working with lists and lists are built into Python. But it's interesting to think about what we would do if lists were not built into Python and we had to kind of build them um, ourselves using classes. How would we do that? Um, there's different ways. Um, I'm going to show one strategy here. It's called a linked list. Um, linked lists are much slower than Python lists, especially um, if I kind of want to look up a value in the middle. Uh, the complexity of doing that is different than a real Python list. But in terms of kind of producing the correct result, we'll get that, albeit slowly. Okay, so the strategy for a linked list is that we're going to have these things called nodes that are going to represent each item in our list. Okay, and I'm going to draw a picture over here on the right of what it looks like when we run the code. And I already have a partially complete picture here, but there's more code that needs to run uh, to kind of make this happen. So at least for now, ignore these two methods, right? I'm not using them yet. Just look at the constructor. The constructor sets a value attribute based on what it's passed in, and then it sets next equal to none. And, and so right now I'm kind of creating this uh, this um, node with the value three, and I'm putting that in a variable, and I've shown that over here, and I want to kind of just think through what the rest of this code does, and, and then draw that picture over here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a b variable and a c variable, and we have the values five and, and seven, and so that's going to be very similar over here, right? I'm going to have um, some additional node instances or objects, and b and c are going to refer to those. All right, so let me draw these over here. So this will look something like this. I'm going to draw it a little bit bigger than the original one. Um, this is also going to have a next and a value. And, um, and the next will be none. And the value will be five, right? So five passes to here. And then my object.next equals, object.next equals five. All right, so I'm going to get five here. And then let me draw one more of these things. This one is going to be next. Um, is none again. Right, in both cases I'm saying self.next equals none. And, and then I have my value, which is going to be seven. And, and so I have, a, you know, up here in my frame, right, I have b, which is a variable, c, which is a variable, both of those are in my global frame, which is kind of grown. And those are going to be referring to my two, um, two new objects. Okay, so, so I've, I've run these first three lines of code. I've created my three objects. And so A, B, and C, A, B, and C refer to those three objects. And, and now I start to get some structure here. Right? I say A dot next equals B and B dot next equals C. So A dot next is none, but I'm saying what I really want to do is I want to set this equal to b. And so when I say a dot next equals b, what I mean is I should have an arrow from here to the place b refers to. So from here to here, I need to have an arrow, and I'm going to do that in red. So instead of none, not none anymore, now it's an arrow like that. And then the same thing here, uh, b dot next equals c. So b dot next equals whatever c points to. So c pointed to here, so I should have an arrow from here to here. All right, so that's not none anymore. That's an arrow uh, uh, just like that. Okay, and so how can we use this to represent a list? Well, the idea is that a will be at the beginning of the list, right? So we have three at the beginning, and then I can use these next to kind of chain along. So, so three is the first value five is the next value, and, and then seven is the next value. So, so really kind of what this list is like, uh, I basically have built a list something like this, kind of a simple list like three, five, um, seven, right, is what I'm going for. And, um, and of course I may have to do things like implement get item and things like that for it to work fully. Now, uh, before we do that, before we get to the brackets, we have some questions here like what is C dot total? What is B dot total? What is A dot total? Um, let's start with c.total. 
So I'm calling the total method, you know, C dot total. So, so I guess the C object is going to be referring, I'm sorry, so C will refer to the same thing that self refers to, right? So, so I guess for now, self is referring to this object right here as I'm running the code, right? So self dot next equal equal to none. So, so this is self and, and self dot next. Yeah, that's equal equal to none. And, and so what am I going to do? I'm just return self dot value, right? And so this is my self, my value is seven, right? So maybe, and I, uh, a little bit crowded, huh? But I'm just trying to say, well, that's, that's seven, right? Okay. What is B dot total? Okay. So B dot total. So I'm running the total method and then, you know, B goes to self. So self is referring whatever B refers to, right? So, so right now B is this thing, right? Okay. If self dot next, or I can think of it as B dot next, if B dot next equals to none, may do something that's not true right it used to be none but not anymore right you know self dot next is not equal to none so i'm going to run this down here so i'm going to return b dot value i'm going to return five plus self dot next dot total okay so this is self and then self dot next is this so self.next.total is the same thing as c.total, which I already know, that was seven, right? So, so if this is self, then self.next.total gives me seven. And, and so when I have this line of code here, you know, self.value is five, self.next.total is seven. And, and so I guess I'm gonna get 12, right? So this b.total, is 12. Okay. What about a dot total? What does that do? Okay, so I'm going to run this. Self is the same thing as a, right? So this is my self. Um, this is false, right? Because next actually refers to something. So I'm going to return this. You know, self dot value is three plus self dot next dot total. So self. Uh, next, so, so I'm doing the total for this. So that really, this is b, you know, self dot next dot total is the same thing as b dot total, which I already know, right? So, so this is now 12, right? Getting the total for this, and self dot value is three. So I guess I'm going to get 15 this time, right? So this is going to be 15, right? So I can I can kind of get the total sum of everything in my list if I wanted to. Okay. Uh, let's come down to this. So what is a of two, of zero? What is a of zero? And so this is one of those cases where I have a special method. Um, putting zero in brackets is like calling get item with whatever is inside of those brackets, right? So, so really I say a of zero, so so my self is going to be whatever A refers to. So I, I'm I'm looking at this, this is my self, and I'm running this. Right, so self is this, and index is zero. So I'm gonna come along here and I'm gonna say, well, if index is zero, return self.value. So self.value gives me gives me three. Right? So so a of zero is three. And what is this next piece? What is a of two? Okay, so let me kind of look at this, right? So, so now if I have a of two, this is false, right? So I come down here. Self.next. So here my index was two, and I'm going to figure out self.next of one. So self.next is this guy, right? That's really like B, right? So so really A of two is a lot like saying B of one. So well, let's think about what B of one is. 
So if I say B brackets one, this would be false. And so I'd say B dot next of zero, you know, one minus one is zero. So, so B dot next, that's C. So really I'm saying C of zero, C bracket zero. Well, what do I get there, right? I mean, if I if self is C and this is zero, I just come here and I get the, the C dot value, right? So I get seven, right? So A of two, just gives me seven, right? So really, you know, if I wanted to, I guess I have like kind of like the A and the B and C. Um, I could get rid of these variables if I wanted the B and the C, because I could get to all of these from A, right? This is A of zero, this is A of one, this is A of two, right? So really A is kind of like my list, right? And I can get everything I need from that. And I kind of just have these extra variables too, so I can kind of talk about it a little bit easier. Uh, what about negative indexing? What kind of error do I get if I say a bracket negative one? Okay, so remember a bracket negative one is just like calling this method with negative one. Now the base case here is when index is zero, right? That's when I don't have the recursion. Okay, but I have negative one. So then I'm gonna make a call with negative two and then negative three and then negative four. Really, it kind of looks like it would be negative recursion, right? Because I would, uh, it feels like that negative number is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, and I never really have zero. Um, but but it's not quite, and the reason why is when I do this self.next, what happens when I do self.next, right? So I kind of come here, and then I'm calling on the next, I'm here, calling on the next, I'm here, and then I'm on here, and I'm on none, and I maybe say none dot next, right? I'm going to say none dot next, and that's where I may really run into trouble, right? So this will actually, I may get uh, an error about none type, right? So this is going to crash. That's one type of error. Okay, five. What would happen, or how would Python Tutor change if we said c.next equals a? So c.next equals a. So this should point to whatever a points to, right? So this, I guess I would change this. And now something pretty wild has happened, right? Because I have a cycle, right? A dot next, dot next, dot next, dot next, right? You can see that there's a cycle, right? I could keep saying A dot next, dot next, dot next, dot next, and I'm always gonna be landing on a node, right? So I kind of ended up in a weird situation. And well, what that means is that something like this is actually gonna work, right? Because well, let's think about that. C of three, you know, C of zero was this, C of one is this, C of two is this, C of three is this, C of four is this. So I guess C of three is just C, right? So this would actually not crash now. I wouldn't be going past then. There is no end to my list. It's an infinite list because these three things just re keep repeating. Um, so this would be fine, right? C of three is just gonna give me seven like before. Okay, one last one. What would happen if I if I say a dot total? What will happen there? Well, now I'm in trouble, right? Because I've effectively, by creating this cycle, I've created uh, an infinitely long sequence. And it's gonna keep trying to sum those things up and I'm gonna get a stack overflow error. Um, so that would just crash.